Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it is time to explain the Indigo League of Legends. That's right, I'm finally participating in a Battle Association League and supreme shout outs to um, Mac aka uh, Curry Noodles. If you guys want to go follow him on Twitter, here is his Twitter page. But he's the one who invited me to this league and as far as I know he's really the one setting it up. So thank you for the invite, it's going to be a lot of fun participating. I decided on the team named Necro, uh, and my I, my team is the Eternity City Enders, so this should be a lot of fun. For those of you who don't know how um, a battle league works, each of the players drafts a team. The way a draft works, of course, if I pick a Pokemon, everyone after me cannot pick that Pokemon, whereas if someone else picks it, of course I can't put that Pokemon on my team. The order of the draft in this case was determined randomly, and very fortunately, I received uh, second pick and that's kind of a double-edged sword while you do get early picks that means of course um, you get to get what you want more of the time but you also can't modify what you want based on what you see other people picking as often because um, in this case I had one two three four five six seven eight people going after me um, so when you're choosing a ten Pokemon team to make your six Pokemon teams out of it's nice to have as much information as you can um, but anyways though for the Eternity Enders, you can of course expect to see Venusaur. That was my very first pick. It is misspelled here, but that's okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't write my team in this doc, just for the record. I would never misspell Venusaur, darn it. Anyways though, um, Venusaur is my first pick. Not only is he my favorite Pokemon of all time, but also just, he just has such a fantastic versatility to him. Venusaur, of course, can be offensive or defensive or especially defensive or tanky or a sub -seater, or an annoyer there are just a lot of things this pokemon can do and then it also has the option of being mega venusaur as well um, in particular i have bred three or four more venusaur giving me a grand total of i think now i have 16 different venusaur sets that are fully trained and just having the options with venusaur between my other teammates are really nice. In particular, with regular Venusaur, I have access to the Chlorophyll set, which means I can have a very potent Sun Sweeper, or I can just go Mega Venusaur with a, you know, have a really, really strong defensive or specially defensive, or even a modest nature to do a lot more damage than people expect. Most people expect Mega Venusaur to be relatively defensive, so I like those options there. With Venusaur, I wanted my second choice, especially after seeing uh, specifically Lopunny, Landorus, and um, Keldeo and Sceptile chosen. I wanted my second choice to be something that had great synergy with Venusaur that wasn't weak to any of the things that Venusaur is weak to, but could also provide that physical slash um, special offensive or defensive pivot. And I, I know from experience that fairies are really, really good at providing that type of support with Venusaur. You may have seen in a lot of my videos where I pair Sylveon with Venusaur, for example. And for this particular uh, league, I chose Clefable just because Clefable, of course, has great abilities in the form of Magic Guard and Unaware. Of course, Unaware completely ignores your opponent's stat boost or stat loss. So if they try to set up with a Dragon Dance Mega Charizard X, Clefable can come in and paralyze it and it won't care about the boost when it gets hit by an Earthquake. Alternatively, if my opponent is running a stall team, Magic Guard Clefable is nice because I won't be susceptible to the poison. Um, so I did have to breed a couple more Clefable for this, but their versatility is going to be really, really nice. Uh, also with Clefable's nice defensive stats, it'll be able to take a variety of hits from both sides of the spectrum. And I might even breed a couple more Clefable just so I have specially defensive ones in addition to physically defensive ones, because you never know. Um, as far as my third choice, uh, I was just looking at a lot of the offensive choices that people had chosen. I missed out on Latios, um, and I also missed out on Landorus, and to a lesser extent, Starmie, as I really wanted Starmie as a spinner, and also Stab, Water, and Psychic type moves, and so that's what made me choose Bisharp in the third slot. Uh, not only is Bisharp a fantastic offensive pivot, being a Steel type with Clefable and Venusaur, if Venusaur is threatened by Psychic or Flying type attacks, I can go into Bisharp. If Clefable is threatened by Poison or Steel type attacks, I can go into Bisharp. So that's interesting team synergy already, just between the first three Pokemon. And Bisharp can use Pursuit, Sucker Punch, and Knock Off, all of them getting a stab boost. 
This is extremely important because not only are a lot of Pokemon relying on their items, but so far I don't have anyone fast on my team. Venusaur only has base 80 speed, which is relatively, that's a little bit above average. And of course Clefable is relatively slow at base 60 speed. Bisharp only has base 70 speed, but with access to Sucker Punch, um, it really doesn't matter how slow he is unless you're going up against something else with priority. So that is some fantastic synergy there. And I don't have to worry too much about something like Landorus coming in with uh, Intimidate just because Bisharp will get access to Defiant and get a plus one attack boost. So just, I really like that. I also missed out on Heatran, unfortunately. Heatran and Starmie were the two that I wanted on my team. I had, I had written down almost my entire team that I wanted and then substitutes out in case I missed them on the seed. Uh, and I really appreciate the ILE just generally accommodating me because I wasn't able to join the voice call when they were doing the draft, but I was able to participate through Skype on my phone and be in the chat. And so thank you guys for just letting me know when it was my turn and when I had picked something that someone already had picked. And for being honest, I really appreciate it. Um, so major shout outs to all my opponents here for being so awesome during that. Also shout outs to my girlfriend for allowing, just like accommodating me generally and, and, and bouncing ideas off of me where I was doing this draft. We were driving back from Nashville at the time, so I hate driving. So not only was she driving, but that allowed me to participate in this draft. So I was quite happy about that as well, especially because it took about an hour and a half to get through all these. Now in the fourth seed, I really, really wanted Zapdos. And fortunately, um, Lance did not pick Zapdos in the fourth. Uh, Zapdos, again, one of my favorite Pokemon. I really wanted Zapdos just because I didn't really have any strong or fast special attackers on the team yet. Um, Zapdos not only boasts a base 100 speed, which is nice, that's that's relatively fast. Uh, base 100 is kind of the, the tipping point for the speed you wanna hit. And of course it has base 125 special attacks, so that means we're going to have very, very powerful special attacks as well. Zapdos is a really nice choice because it has good synergy with what I've chosen so far. Zapdos just being weak to ice and rock and me having resistances for both of those. Uh, but also Zapdos can support what I have already. For example, if I go with an offensive modest Mega Venusaur, Zapdos can utilize Tailwind or Thunder Wave to slow down my opponent. If I go for a Clefable that needs to set up, for example, with Calm Mind, then Zapdos can utilize um, a variety of different moves to either force the opponent to phase out or hold Rocky Hellman in case they want to. I want to punish some U-turns, things like that. Zapdos can fill those types of roles. Uh, also, Zapdos hit several of these Pokemon already. It's going to be really nice for uh, something like Max Team, where I saw in the first seed already that he chose Politoed. I'm going to expect some other water types from him, most likely, or at least things that can utilize the water. Um, so it's nice to just have options like that. Now, after that, I went directly for a Zoom roll. Number one, I was just surprised that no one had chosen a Zoom rule so far, but uh, I really wanted to work in a Grass Water Fire Core and a Fighting um, and a Fighting Dark type core as well. So to get started on those cores, I needed to go ahead and get a Water Pokemon going. And I'll, while I already do have Clefable as far as Fairy types go, Clefable is much more of a pivot slash defensive Pokemon, and the Zoom rule is definitely just there to really tack on some damage. Uh, with the huge power ability, Azumarill's attack is extremely high, doubling his base um, 50 attack to, uh, well, basically base 100, which gives him over 400 attack when he's at level 100. That's a lot of attack power. And uh, there's some nice additions there. Not only be having access to stab water and fairy type moves, but priority in the form of Aqua Jet, and a little bit of versatility in the form of do I want to use Assault Vest or Choice Band or Belly Drum. There are, uh, just having access to all those different things are nice. Um, again, good, good synergy with Venusaur and also decent synergy with, uh, Bisharp as well, resisting the fighting, resisting the fire, uh, not resisting ground, but, um, Azumarill can definitely come in on unstabbed ground type attacks. So, uh, when I'm dealing with things like Landorus or Aerodactyl, I may not have anything that can outspeed them right now, but Azumarill can hit them with priority, which is very, very good to have. Now, I also needed a dragon type Pokemon, or at least dragon type moves. I did not have anything to use dragon type moves. 
so far I could I guess use hidden power dragon I don't know that wouldn't be very smart uh, and since Latios and uh, Garchomp were already gone Latios was actually my first choice so good job to Bradley for getting that and then um, Gudra was actually my second choice so Connor and Bradley picked up both of my uh, first and second choice so I ended up going to my third choice which was Latios Latios is a little bit more self-explanatory um, it does give me a nice defogger option and also I get to spam Draco Meteor if my opponent fails and bring a fairy. Um, a lot of my choices were also motivated by wanting to deny my opponent's options. Um, picking up Azumarill and Clefable allows me to use two of the kind of more premier fairies. The only ones that are really used besides them are maybe Clefki and Sylveon. Uh, so, and Clefki and Sylveon don't really fit into the team structure that I have. So, I, I like Latias for defog and spamming Draco Meteor. It also is a Levitator, so Bisharp and Latias can kind of go back and forth. I do have to watch out for U-Turn with that, so again, supporting things by switching it with Zapdos with the Rocky Helmet, very, very nice option to have. Now with that core that I wanted to do earlier, I also like having Fighting, Dark, and Psychic on a team, just because they all form a nice little trifecta as well. And I already have my Psychic and my Dark type, and so I decided to go for Trakian, just because I did not have um, Stab Rock or Stab Fighting type moves on the team at this point. I have plenty of things to resist fighting weaknesses that now I compound by having Bisharp and Trakian on the team. Um, and I'm not as worried about ground type moves with two flying slash levitating Pokemon. So that basically just leaves the grass and the water type moves. And I have even more things to switch in on grass and water type moves. So. Drakian is a nice fit in here. I do need to catch um, the one in my uh, Alpha Sapphire version. But in the meantime, I have the two that I caught back in black and white. So Drakian is nice because he can also be a secondary Stealth Rock user, similar to Bisharp and Clefable. He can also use Focus Sash very, very well, or just kind of run through a team that's weak to fighting type moves with the Choice Scarf. So a lot of versatility there as well. I like Pokemon that can serve several different rows, roles, excuse me and being able to have them all in one box with all the different types that I have. I'm not gonna put all 14 of the Venusaur that I have in one box, but it'll just be nice to have those options when I'm choosing what to use against each team here. Now in the next thread, I decided to go for Excadrill. I needed a spinner, and I was trying to think of another spinner that would be good for this team that wasn't Starmie or Fortress, because those were, Starmie was my first choice, and Kanga chose him fairly early on. I thought of Fortress, but then uh, I scrolled back through what had been chosen and I saw that I had already been picked in the first seed and I just forgot about it. So I ended up going Excadrill just because I wanted some secondary um, spinning pressure that when coupled with stab ground type attacks really lets me handle a lot of these Pokemon very well. Excadrill is also notorious for being scarfed or assault vested. So it's nice to make your opponent guess which one you're carrying. Um, and also with Mold Breaker, Excadrill is able to hit things that are levitating or uh, such as Rotom. Rotom is the main thing that comes to mind there. I guess you can hit a switching in from a Latios or a Latias or something like that. But uh, just having a little bit more glue to the team there because it's unlikely that I would use Excadrill in conjunction with Bisharp um, and even more so in conjunction with Terrakian because they share so many weaknesses. But still, it's nice to have that, that glue in the form of a solid rapid spinner. Now at this point, um, I think on this seat, I noticed that someone chose Talonflame there. And I realized that I didn't really have any strong flying type attacks. And being able to spam flying is very, very nice. I saw that someone chose Tornadus already. And of course, Talonflame left on that seed. Um, I have Zapdos, but Zapdos doesn't really get any good special flying type moves. And so I was just thinking, what would I, what's, what's good for that next slot? And I actually decided to go with Mega Pinsir. Uh, Pinsir's premier counter is generally Zapdos and OU. Outside of that, after you weaken your opponent's team, he can kind of just run through a team with a priority uh, quick attack after aerial aid boost. And so Pinsir is also relatively bulky at um, uh, Mega Pinsir rather at base 120 defenses and 90 regular special defense. So he can take some unboosted hits as well. Uh, but I just, it, priority is just so important that I wanted to have several different options and so now I have the Sucker Punch and the Aqua Jet and now I have a flying type quick attack. So 
I have several options here. Um, Pinsir actually also picks up some nice team coverage on some things that I haven't been paying attention to in the draft that I just noticed. Uh, and then it also allows me, it alleviates me from having to go for riskier moves like spamming Draco Meteor and things like that when I can just use Quick Attack or Earthquake. Now in the last seed I ended up choosing Entei because I was trying to think of another fire type that I really wanted to use. Um, Heatran was already gone, Rotom Heat was already gone, wherever he is, I know he's already gone. And um, I think some other random ones like Charizard and Victini were also already gone, as we see right here and here. And so I wanted a fire type just to complete my synergy, but at the same time it had to be a fire type that made sense for the team. I ended up going with Entei for access to extreme speed and the ability to kind of spam Sacred Fire to have the chance to burn things. Um, you kind of always wanted to, to knock probability into your favor when you can. And so being able to burn things, Chandelure would have been another good choice just because I don't have a ghost type. Um, but I, I just went with Entei just because now even if someone does have faster priority than me, I can come in with extreme speed and kind of clean that up. So I hope you guys enjoyed me kind of just reviewing the team that I chose here and uh, look forward to when I have my first battle. My first battle is actually against Isaiah, and he's gonna be from the Palatown Munchlaxes. I like that name. Everyone has interesting names for their team names. Um, but of course, since everyone can see everyone else's teams, you can kind of pick and choose, and so I'm going to be doing a little analysis before the battle, and hopefully the first battle will be a victory. So hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.